Hi guys, today I uh, got a package from Adidas 1984X uh, from YouTube. Um, <clears throat> he was having a problem with his monitor for an Area 51 cabinet and uh, he hasn't done a lot of soldering and uh, I'm no expert but uh, I can handle a soldering iron pretty good and he asked me if I could help him out by installing a new cap kit and a flyback transformer onto this chassis. Um, it's a Neotech chassis and uh, he was having issues with it uh, after it would run for a while um, it would kinda fade out have diagonal lines in it and everything and uh, yeah, he had some some troubles like that he could uh, hit the side of the cabinet and sometimes it would come back in and then go back out and and uh, all kinds of little problems like that and he's hoping a cap kit will fix it and uh, the new flyback <clears throat> most people in the forums the arcade controls forums seem to think it's probably a flyback issue and uh, some other people had said check the height and some other things and I want to try to check all that out the first thing I'm going to do is get it out of the package and make sure it's intact looks like it made it through UPS pretty good there's a bit of a dent on this side it looks like they might have set a, a large box on top of it and it just kind of flexed it down a little bit but it looks like he's got this package in there pretty good so I hope everything's intact. It should be. We'll just go ahead and uh, pop it open here and uh, I'll cut right here and come back after I cut this tape off. Alright, we got the box open here. <clears throat> Looks like he's packed it pretty good. Got a little packing paper in there. Some pretty heavy duty bubble wrap there. There's his chassis. There's his cap kit from Bob Roberts, just like the ones I usually get and install in the in the few cabs that I've had here. Bob's a great guy. <clears throat> and here's his flyback. There's his flyback. pick up on this easy. I'm going to set the camera down for just a second. I'll tell you what, I'll cut away from here and I want to turn this over and do this carefully with two hands. So I'll be right back. Okay, we've got his chassis unpackaged and uh, safely on a cardboard box here. Um, <clears throat> chassis looks like it made the trip in pretty good shape. There's his remote board, his neck board, anode cap from his old flyback which we're going to replace that and this will be the first time I've replaced a flyback and uh, I'm going to take great care doing that I told him it'd be a first time experience for me but uh, you got to learn somehow and uh, bought a brand new soldering iron some of my old ones are getting a little mucked up and needed new tips and stuff so I just I just got my wife to pick me up one today she should be in any minute and uh, <clears throat> got me a brand new 25 watt soldering iron and pick me up some desoldering braid and stuff while she was out. There's his power connector and uh, luckily I just had an adapter made from another guy in the forums and it, it should fit this I believe. And uh, there's his connections for his game, whatever game board you would hook up. Now that's a little different than the connectors that I've got but it'll be easy to interface with that. I'll just have to have to make something to hook up to one of my game boards for testing purposes and stuff, you know. But just looking over the board here for signs of any obvious trauma, I'm pretty sure he would have noticed it. He's been looking over the board pretty closely and uh, he re reflowed some uh, solder joints underneath the flyback transformer trying to fix some, some issues and uh, he's still having trouble. Right off the bat, nothing really sticks out. Looks like it's going to be a pretty easy board to to cap, I believe. Looks like it's it's got pretty good access to the capacitors and stuff. There's always a a few like if I can get out of the light here. If you look way, I'm still in the light. Way down in that corner, there's a little bitty capacitor down there behind the flyback transformer, and uh, 
what I might just do is go ahead and remove this flyback transformer go ahead and uh, replace all the caps and then put the other flyback transformer in place and it'll make it a lot easier to get to those caps and put them in place that's one advantage of putting a new flyback in and uh... Huh. don't know if he noticed or not but there's an alignment tool in his uh... horizontal width coil he may have just left that in there for me <clears throat> there's his horizontal width coil somebody might have this just stuck in there permanently I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing to do or not but uh... he probably just put it in there because it fit and he wanted to give me something to adjust it with if I needed to this seem to fit but uh, I'll cut away from here and uh, looks like everything's pretty safe I want to take him some pictures to make sure he can see that this stuff did make it safely and uh, email those to him and this will be part of uh, a video to probably have a few parts here and uh, show you some of the process along the way and uh, when we install the new caps and the new flyback and everything and uh, show you some of the test results and I hope everything works out great for him uh, I told him, you know, uh, I do my best job on it. I've done just a few cap kits, and I've never done a flyback transformer, so this will be a first for me. But uh, if he felt a little safer with me doing it, I'm going to try to do my best job for him, and hopefully we can straighten him out. See you in a little while. Hey, uh, Adidas 1984X, I just wanted to show you a couple of little things that I noticed. <clears throat> One is right here. There's supposed to be a little clip that holds these two wires from your flyback kind of up and get some routed towards um, mounting to your uh, neck board and it is broken let me see if I can show you it's, it's not a big deal if you ask me but I just want to show you can't hardly get my finger there where I can get it on camera but but right there it's just barely dangling there's there's a piece missing from it it's probably in your box I'll look in just a second yeah there's supposed to be another piece attached to it but there's a piece on there that's just wobbling out and back Let's see if I can get this where you can see it it's just barely hooked on and there's supposed to be another piece right there that goes forward and it's like a little clip that holds these two wires here I don't know if it was like that when you got it from Bob I don't know if you looked at it that closely but uh, if you can see on your original, let me set your new fly back down. You can see on your original right there, see how these two wires are clipped in? Yours is broken right about there and it's missing a little chunk. And we'll look in the box here. But your fly back was kind of by itself to this side of the box there. And this is, this is the side of the box that had the dent on it could have happened during shipping but may have been that way when you got it like I say it's, it's not a real big deal it's not like it's gonna make the deal whether it functions or not I'm trying to see if I can shake it loose out of any of this packaging may have been broken on the way shipping to you kit was in that piece your flyback was in that piece and it's not inside there just a little piece of plastic I don't see it in here I got a feeling it was probably probably like that when they shipped it to you or got like that when you had it shipped to you but it's just a small piece of plastic that holds those two wires kind of kind of Pulls, pulls them out of the way at the bottom there, holds it up a little bit and gets it routed towards the neck board where you need it. And uh, I don't think it's going to be a big big issue. But there's one other issue I did want to address with you too. Hopefully you did order the right flyback. I can't remember off the top of my head if that model is the correct flyback. But uh, looks uh, looks just a little different. And the main thing I'm concerned with is uh, it's got a support screw right here that, that mounts onto the original flyback, and it just gives the top of the flyback a little bit of a little bit of a support 
helps mount it there where there's I guess no pressure on it even though it's got all those solder points on the bottom I guess they want to make sure that you know it's, it's mounted in there really good and firm and uh, that screw hole is not going to line up with your new flyback if you look at the top of this see you've got it but do you see where it is if you see your anode wire coming out of the top of your flyback and then look at this one there's your anode wire coming out and uh, that piece right there is, is to the to the left here and your new one is right here to the right it's not going to line up it's going to end up right right about here somewhere and uh, I could uh, possibly drill another hole through here put you a screw through to mount it but uh, I probably I probably leave that up to you, your discretion, or I might just hook another small piece of metal to this and come on back just to give it a little support so you can run the screw still inside this flyback. But I'm going to make sure first of all that this is the correct model for this chassis. I'm just going to look online. But I wanted to address those two issues with you because I noticed those as soon as I were, was taking pictures for you here to make sure that you've seen all this was in good shape. Okay guys, I'm about to start a little work on Adidas 1984X's chassis here. Uh, got my little work table set up with all the things that I'm probably going to need. Got his uh, new flyback and his uh, cap kit there and I'm going to separate all his caps out. I usually do kind of like uh, one of the other guys here on YouTube and separate all these caps out onto a piece of styrofoam and just stick them up where they're easy to access and you've got them all organized into the different values and uh, as you set them up you can check them off the list and make sure that you do have all of them before you get started and make sure that the values are similar to what's on the list uh, you know with most uh, capacitors uh, you have to stay within the uh, microfarad rating which it looks like UF rating on the side of the capacitor but uh, you can go a little higher on the voltage if it requires like a um, you know 60 volts it can be 80 volts and etc like that but uh, as long as it's not lower voltage and as long as the uh, UF or microfarad value is not different usually you're safe so we're going to separate those out got me a brand new 25 watt soldering iron from Radio Shack here local wife picked that up for me and uh, I haven't bought one of these in a while the older ones I had I think they were either 15 or 25 watt that I, I wore out they weren't this heavy duty. It's a pretty heavy duty one. It's just like my 40 water. But the 40 water just has too large a tip and uh, produces a little more heat than I want. So I don't want to damage his board. It's probably pretty delicate anyway. Um, I got me some desoldering braids, some solder, solder su sucker, which I use sometimes, but I want to use this desoldering braid as much as possible. And, uh, Okay, uh, you know, a little sponge or something like that with some water. This has got like a Brillo pad on one side to help you get off some old solder off of your uh, tip. And uh, got his chassis here. And uh, got it supported with a, a thick piece of foam here, you know, just to keep it from uh, damaging any of the pins on the bottom when I'm flipping it out and back and working. So try to keep it on that a little bit. This table's a little bit padded too, but the surface is susceptible to getting stabbed with those little pins from the components on the bottom so I just put me a little something on there like a work surface you know piece of foam or something and of course you gotta have a bright light so you can see pretty good and MK to keep you company <laughs> but uh, what I'm gonna do right now is uh, go over his uh, board and uh, reflow any bad joints which we've already found several on this board especially one on the flyback um, make any kind of repairs possible I can without replacing any components and um, just double check everything I can and uh, make sure it's in good shape and go ahead and hook it up to one of the extra tubes that I have here and just try it out and see if those repairs made any difference in the symptoms he was having and uh, if so that may actually solve his problem but since he's also bought the cap kit and the new flyback I'm positive he wants those installed so even if this solves the issue, I'll make a video of it, you know, working and run it for an extended period of time to see, you know, uh, if it slowly starts showing the same symptoms again. If not, we'll know that maybe solder joints and stuff like that was the root cause of the problem. And putting the new flyback in the uh, cap kit in 
is probably just going to, you know, make the image more stable, give them better colors, and uh, head off any repairs that might need to be done down the road since the chassis is already out and it's in my hands right now. We just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get started on that and uh, maybe I'll come back uh, when I get some of this stuff done and and uh, either show you some of the things I've done or, or show you uh, connecting this up to one of the tubes to do some testing. Okay, we're starting right now. You see these two points here. There's one and there's the other. This is for his degauss coil. It's a two pin connector and uh, as soon as I started inspecting the board I noticed they were not only cold solder joints but they were cracked all the way around. Let's see if I can get close enough so you can see this one wiggle. Let's see. I don't know if my finger's on it. Hold on. I don't know if you see on the left there that one is wiggling out and back. There's actually a crack all the way around that solder joint. The other one has no solder on it at this moment because I just used this braid here to suck it off of that joint and I'm about to re-solder it. And uh, I'm going to put some fresh solder on that, suck the solder off the other joint and re-solder that. Hopefully this connection will be much stronger and uh, if his degauss hasn't been working this is probably the cause. But yeah, you can probably see both of those are moving up and down right now. Up and down. I mean, it's terrible. Uh, the one on the right is because I've desoldered it. The one on the left is just because it's uh, cracked all the way around. I've got my finger under there wiggling it out and back. And I mean, that's the way it was uh, when I first inspected the board. So hopefully that'll fix that. And we've got some other joints like, uh, see if I can find it here. Right here. This is uh, where your yoke wires come down. These two here are for the vertical, and this one and this one is for your horizontal. And one of the users on the arcade controls forum spotted this one right here just from a blurry pick. I mean, he had really great eyes, and I looked at it, and it's in the same shape as the the uh, degals coil pins. It's cracked all the way around. I know my video is terrible, but this is cracked all the way around. We're gonna desolder every one of these one at a time, reflow it with fresh solder, and uh, I think that right there is the main cause of his problem, I really do believe. But he's also got problems up here with his flyback. This is a very terrible solder joint. It looked pretty bad at first, and we told him to reflow it, and uh, he's kind of new with the soldering iron, and looks like he's got a really cold solder joint here, and the pin is just sticking straight through the center and uh, is not even attached to the solder. So that's probably causing a major problem with this flyback. This flyback has been arcing here. It looks really bad on this trace. And this trace, I'm, I'm really afraid it's going to be damaged when I get this old solder off, but I'm going to try to see if I can't get it to take some solder and, and hold to that pin. And we're going to test this with the old flyback, and then we'll put a new flyback in there uh, after we see if we solve what the problems are and stuff. But that's it for right now. Let me get back to work. Okay guys, uh, <coughs> got his degaussing coil pins all re-soldered. They look pretty good there. Looking at these two right here. One, two. Cleaned them up, got them re-soldered. Looks pretty good. Now I'm turning my attention over here at the flyback. They've got all that nasty cold solder off of that pin, but the trace looks really burnt underneath. And I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleaning to it, see if there's still a good enough trace to solder to. It looks pretty rough right now. Try to clean it up. See if I can clean it up and come back and re-solder to that. Be back in a minute. Okay, guys, I've cleaned that up as good as I could. The trace is in terrible condition. The trace is almost non-existent around that pin for the flyback. And you're looking through a magnifying glass right now. But don't know how well you can see this, but the trace actually stops right at the tip of my fingernail and it's lifting backwards right here around that pin. There is no trace whatsoever. That's just the, uh, the circuit board underneath the trace that's exposed right there and it's burnt. And uh, this trace right here, there's none of that protective coating on it. It's just trying to peel back this way, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. It, it looks like the solder was just globbed up enough to make contact with that trace, and and uh, 
I don't know if that's a strong enough strong enough link. I don't know if it needs to be a jumper wire ran. I think I'm going to get on the arcade uh, controls for them and ask a few of the guys that's got more experience than me because I'd hate to just try to just try to solder to that little bit of existing trace and then you know high currents wanting to come through there and it's not a good enough connection. I may have to run a, a jumper wire all the way back to this point right here. Um, and I don't know exactly what gauge would be good to use so I need to ask somebody probably but uh, I could always take that pin from the flyback and bend it over and solder it onto there but I just I want a really strong connection if it's possible I just hate that that trace is damaged like that but uh, it's been you know probably arcing there and uh, where uh, the owner Adidas uh, not saying anything bad about you or nothing, you know, just where you had to heat it up a little bit to try to reflow that solder, it probably, you know, made it a little bit hotter too. Um, and I mean, you got to do what you got to do to try to fix something. Uh, and it was already in rough shape before. We just got to, we just got to go the best direction we can here. So I'm going to get a little more advice before I go any further with this joint. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my attention next on this uh, vertical yoke wire pins with these uh the vertical connects here and I'm gonna go ahead and reflow the uh excuse me, reflow these for the horizontal also. And uh since that comes straight down from there, that that goes right to one of the horizontals. Might have to do a jumper wire there, but we'll we'll see and uh I'll come back and let you know what I've done after I get a little more information. Okay guys, I've reflowed a few more joints I got three of them here. There's two there for the vertical yoke pins. That's a horizontal yoke pin connection right there. One more horizontal right there, but I'm not going to reflow it yet because it's on the same trace that attaches to this this bad uh, trace up here for the uh, flyback. And I want to wait before I heat that up too much and see if I can run a jumper wire. I'm still waiting to see if the guys from the uh, arcade controls forum give me any tips on doing that, and so I can. Uh, get it done effectively and uh, went ahead and uh, reflowed a joint right here and right here it's just holding a heat sink but they were both cracked so I went ahead and reflowed them and uh, the reason they look dark is uh, the uh, <coughs> the flux I'm trying to think here it's pretty late at night it's about 12 midnight but <laughs> I'm always doing work late I'm going to come back in a second I'm going to reflow uh, a joint here. I might as well do both of them on a capacitor here and uh, another couple of joints here on uh, some heat sinks and I'm checking the smaller ones too. A lot of the smaller ones look pretty good but if I take a picture of them digitally and zoom in I can see them a lot better than with my naked eye so I'm going to recheck some of those and uh, it seemed like there was a, uh, let's see do, 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 do. yeah right up here uh, AC input lines they looked kind of rough to me. I think I might reflow them. So I'll be back in a few minutes after I've done a little more and see if the guys in the uh, arcade controls forum respond anymore and uh, give me any tips on straightening that mess right there out.